Welcome back to the show. I'm here at the Overseer's Tomb, and Dr. Hawass, who is a very busy man, is just Hello, getting Jay. up to cause How are you? How are you? You've been busy tonight. <laughs> very busy. Do uh, something for me here before we go inside the tomb. These hieroglyphics, just quickly tell me what they mean. You know, the hieroglyphic here is telling us about beer and bread for offering during the feasts, but the most important here is the title of this man. Mm -hmm. First of all, his name is Ni Su Wissert. And his title is Emira Hut At Per, means the overseer of the administrative district. That means that this man was the mayor of the village of the pyramid builders. This entire area around the pyramid. This entire area, and he was in charge of them. And look at him, yep. standing, and behind him his wife, wife. touching him. Who may also be in here. And a fiction, love. maybe. Love and affection. Yeah. That's the Egyptian way. The Egyptian well, way of love, and that's how we built the well, pyramids. We're going to head back in now, and we'll go down Dr. Now. Herwas will head down for the first time and, you know, and oversee the very <coughs> final moments. And you know, here we found a skeleton yes. with a dog. And maybe this man is a friend of this mayor. Dr. Herwas is going to start the chipping very soon now. Yeah. We should mention the fact that uh, we have no way of knowing, of course, once again, what is inside the coffin, a mummy or a skeleton or even dust possibly, but what we do know is that when the ancient Egyptians were laid to rest, it was with the faith that they would live forever. Maybe our camera from down below can give you the whole shot. The fact that it has not yet been broken, there's been no plundering, raises the likelihood that we may find a mummy or a skeleton or artifacts. But even if it's just the dust of 4,000 years, the discoveries taking place on this site are finally beginning to give us the answers to the question of who built the pyramids. About 12 years ago, Dr. Zahi Hawass was wrestling with a tough problem. While there are hundreds of tombs here near the pyramids, tombs of queens, of princes and princesses, of nobles and high-ranking officials, Dr. Hawass could not find a single tomb of the people who actually built the place. Zahi knew that if he could find the builders, he could make them talk, and that these dead men could tell him tales about who they were and how they built the pyramids. It was my dream to find any evidence of the people who built the pyramids. Then, in 1990, in a strange twist, a tourist helped turn the dream into reality. The discovery happened completely by accident. I was sitting at my office, it was in August, it was hot. The chief of the guard came, said, sir, a lady was riding a horse and the leg of the horse felt in a hole. I came here, I looked at the accident, I found a mud brick wall. I thought that this is a major discovery. This is really the first tube that we found. It's beautifully vaulted, it was covered with plaster. When I looked here, I could see that the name is written hieroglyphic. Pitah Ship Su. I looked at the other side, I could see a niche for the people to bring offering during the feast to give it to this man. Next to the man's name appeared a key title, Acquaintance of the King. This is the beginning of this major story. Zahi knew he had to keep digging because the title and other tomb details hinted that the man was a worker and where there was one, he knew he'd find more. Since then, they found over a thousand new graves, each one belonging to a pyramid builder. Most were simple, small mounds made of mud, brick and stone. Some shaped like small pyramids. Higher up the hill, they found bigger tombs. These were the graves of the overseers, the foremen on the job. This was a huge find. The overseers' tombs were loaded with information. Not only the names, but most important, the titles of the dead men. Now, Dr. Hawass could finally create a flowchart for one of the most incredible construction jobs ever. Fascinating titles began to appear. The overseer of the workmen who dragged the stones. The overseer of the west side of the pyramid. Each new title revealed a new detail of how the Egyptians had organized themselves. In this place, every day for us is very exciting. 
when you discover a tomb and there is hieroglyphic inscription, it's telling us that this man was in charge of workmen. You find someone who's the overseer of the craftsmen, the man behind the officials, the man who's in charge of the harbor. All these titles are really unique. This is why every tomb here has a place on my heart. These overseers didn't just leave behind their titles. They left a lot of beer, hundreds of beer jars, left to quench the buried man's thirst in the afterlife, proved that even drinking beer would stretch into eternity. And so it worked. The diggers were also finding tools in the workers' tombs. This is the kind of tools that an artist will use in carving the face of a statue uh, to make it smooth and make the chest of the statue or the legs of the statue. And if you touch it, you can feel uh, the hand of the workman who actually used it since 4,000 years ago. Statues of princes and nobles and other tomb treasures are kept in the storeroom at Giza, a place where television cameras have never filmed before. But for Zahi, the most amazing things in here are the statues that show what the workers really looked like. This statue here is a very important statue for me because this is the first statue that we found in our excavation that a lady grinding grain because she's working to make food and bread for the workmen who are working very hard in building the pyramid. What's important is that if you look at the faces of each one here, each person can tell us the story of the great Egyptians who built the pyramids. The dead have been talking, and Zahi has learned remarkable things about them. But these workers had even more secrets to reveal. Secrets hidden in their bones. We also know the kinds of things they took with them. Take the overseer of carpenters, Inti Shedu, who was buried nearby in sight of the pyramid. And being buried so close to the king gave him a better shot at eternity. As an overseer, Inti Shedu could afford some funeral extras. He took several statues to the grave, each painted and carved in stone. His immortality depended on the statues which, when placed inside his tomb, would serve as his spiritual doubles. Statues, beer jars, and other artifacts have given us key details about the builders. But the most important details in Inti Shedu's tomb, like all the workers found in the cemetery, are in his bones. Inti Shedu and the other workers buried in the cemetery did achieve immortality in a way, thanks to modern Egyptian scientists. For Zahi, the revelations from their bones and tombs have helped rewrite history. Before he found them, he had been haunted by the writings of an ancient Greek historian who claimed the pyramids were built by an army of 100,000 slaves. But new discoveries by bone expert Dr. Aza Mohammed Sari al Din is showing that the Greeks had it wrong. Dr. Aza is a kind of bone reader, and etched deep into the bones are the stories of the ancient workers. A slave army would have been mostly male, but that is not the case with these bones. We found that the percentages of the males to the females was about 50 percent, and also we found some children. Instead of slaves, Dr. Aza seemed to be finding the remains of some kind of worker's village, where entire families live. And the bones tell another story about this place. Whether slave or free, many of the workers spent most of their days doing brutally hard work. X-rays of the ancient bones reveal severe wear, 
Many of the workers' joints had been ruined by extreme and repeated stress. And the idea of back-breaking work may have started in ancient Egypt, where there are plenty of damaged spines as evidence. The spine is severely curved, and this, this is, of course, caused by compression of the vertebrae, especially these two or three vertebrae are wedge-shaped. Building the pyramids without using wheels, pulleys, or winches meant the workers' bodies got punished. After all, this was no small feat. The Great Pyramid was the tallest building in the world until the 20th century. Workers would have to set a huge stone every two to three minutes, seven days a week, for three decades, to finish the pyramids by the time the king died. A lot of workers probably died in the process, and injuries were no doubt frequent. But a remarkable find suggests that many builders survived their injuries. We have the example here of the fractured bone that is a part of the arm. And this bone, as we see, it is healed in a very good position. This bone has healed so well, indicated by the bulge, it must have been set by an expert. And it's only one example of many. But the biggest surprise of all is that they did more than mend bones. There's evidence that they could perform surgery when they had to. When the weight of a crushing stone virtually destroyed a worker's lower arm, there was only one medical solution. Amputation. These are the two bones of the arm. This is the normal position. And they are amputated about this level, about one-third of the arm. Even more amazing, the man survived it. And for this individual, we have also the upper arm. And we can see which is this part of the, uh, of the bone. And uh, you can notice that it's curved because this individual were having this amputation at this level. So he used to use his hand like this. And this causes the curvature in the bone as we see here. And this means that this person lives for many years after this amputation. No one ever thought such surgery was survivable at the time when the pyramids were built. The doctors were not only able to stop the bleeding, they somehow stopped the infection too, possibly by cauterizing the wound with searing hot metal. Would slaves have been cared for so well? Not likely. Their treatment seems to show just how valuable the workers were, and just how important this royal building project was to ancient Egypt.